Today, it's the secret that destroyed their friendship. Did she know? And started a love triangle. I saw him look at her in a way that he never looked at me. That ended with a shocking twist of fate. I think it's time. Well, I have something to tell you myself. Today on Mel. I'm Mel Robbins, and on today's show, we're talking about love triangles. Ooh, you showed up for a good show today. <laughs> and the secrets that destroy friendships. So I picked this quote to start us off. Nothing haunts us like the things we don't say. Has someone slipped out of your life without a goodbye? Now, this not only happens to women, men feel the sting, too. Case in point, Nathaniel. He wrote in wanting my help to write a friendship that went wrong, and he's desperate to understand why. Two years ago, I met a woman named Anissa at work, and we became really good friends. We would hang out, we would go out, and I really thought of her as a bro. We were really close, and then something happened, and she cut me off. We haven't spoken in almost a year. She froze me out, changed her number. I don't even understand why. I think it has something to do with my relationship status. But it's like she got some kind of secret. Now, I want answers. I miss her. Well, before we talk to Nathaniel, I want to start with his former friend, Anessa, who he misses. And she has admitted to me that she has a secret that ended their friendship. So, Anessa, what's the secret? Well, Mel, my secret is I've always been in love with Nathaniel. And, I mean, I have fell in love with him ever since the first day I, I saw that smile. It's just the way that he made me feel so comfortable in my own skin. And just, you know, everything about him, like, and I was so afraid to tell him, like. <laughs> so he doesn't know that you're in love with him? Um, no, he has no idea. I mean, I didn't really build up the confidence to tell him. And then we were friends, of course, so I didn't want to ruin that part of our relationship, like, as if he didn't feel the same way, it would be really awkward. So I just, it, it, I, I have, um, you know, a problem with expressing my emotional feelings. Well, you're doing a great job right now. Yeah, well, you're not him, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you saw him, because it's been months since you've seen him. Yes, correct. When you saw him on that tape, did you feel anything? My heart was melting. <laughs> like Even with those goofy glasses he was wearing? <laughs> That's true yeah. love. <laughs> yeah. So your heart was fluttering and melting? Yes, butterflies in my stomach. So where did things go wrong? Oh, boy. Well, I decided to throw this party so, you know, my friends can meet some of my other friends and so my friends can meet him. And I invited my best friend for almost over 10 years, Nishima. Yeah. I spent hours doing my hair, my makeup, getting dressed. And that was the night that I was going to tell him how I felt. I introduced him to my best friend, and I saw him look at her in a way that he never looked at me. And they hit it off, like, all night. They were talking, flirting, giggling, and I just, I was extremely hurt. Like, I felt like I shrunk in that room. So did she know that you well, liked him? Well, Mel, I showed her a picture of him. Like, that was, like, a month before the party. And my thing is, like, you know, I felt, I felt like she should have known. Like, I just showed her, like, isn't he cute? She's like, yeah, well, do you like him? I'm like, no, no, because like I said, like, it's kind of hard for me to express those emotions. Like, I've always been that way. And, you know, just because I'm doing it with you, like, we're strangers. So, I mean, it's kind of easier for me we're to do that. We're not strangers no more. Let's talk about <laughs> that right now. Yeah. <laughs> right. So, so did you ever talk to her about him beyond that photo when you said, mm -hmm. what do you think? It was nothing beyond that photo, actually. Are you angry at her? I'm, I'm angry at myself because I could have prevented this from happening. I could have stood up for myself like, you know, this, this is, I could have stopped it right after the party, but I just let it go on and go on. And so how soon after you introduced them did they start dating? Instantly. He came into work the next day 
thank you for introducing me to her. She's super cute. Like, she's cool. We're gonna go out on dates. And then I started to get like texts with videos and pictures like, thank you, you're the perfect matchmaker. I'm like, you're supposed to feel that way about me, not her. Did she ever ask you if it was okay or follow up with you? I mean, no, she never, no. And you know, are they still together? Uh, together, she's pregnant. Oh. Half the audience is holding their chest right now. Yeah. Because everybody's feeling the heartbreak because a lot of us have been there. Right. I so think, yeah. Nathaniel is here. Yeah. Are you ready to see him? <sighs> Yeah, I'm ready to just get this off of my chest and maybe move on and just get some, some clarity. And some closure? Some closure. Okay, well, Nathaniel, come on out. Hi. Bro. Hey, how you doing? Good, how are you? I'm great. What's up, bro? <laughs> Hi. How you Did doing? you just call her bro? Yeah. That's a <laughs> So it's been we a while. Friends. How you doing? I'm fine. How's it feel seeing Anessa again? Well, I'm happy to see her, but I want to know, like, why you stopped talking to me, to my girl, like, what's going on? Why do you think she stopped talking to you? I don't know. I have no idea. I have no idea. She just stopped, like, changed the number, you know, deleted us on her social media. It just seemed kind of weird. And obviously it bothered you because you reached out asking for my help with this. Right, right. It did bother me because, I mean, I looked at her like a good friend, like, like a brother, like seriously. I don't, I, I'm I don't honestly understand. Surprised I'm looking at a very beautiful woman, so I'm surprised you keep calling her a brother, you know? I mean, I've never seen her dress like this in my life. Anessa. I think it's time that you get this secret off your chest. Well, I, I want to tell you that I've always been in love with you. What? Yeah. Love? Like, love what? Not like friend, friendship love. Like, I always wanted to nah. take our friendship to the next and level. That don't even make sense because you hooked me up with your homegirl. Like, I never even got that feeling from you. I didn't know how to tell you. I didn't have the confidence or the courage to, you, like... You, you had confidence to do other things. Like, I never got this from you, like... So you're surprised? Yes. I thought she was... <laughs> I thought she was gay, like... Uh, no. Okay, well, we have established that she's not. Okay. <laughs> and I want you to just, for a second, to be with Anessa and what she just said to you. And what she just said to you is that she was in love with you and she didn't have the courage to tell you. I'm kind of lost because we were together so many times alone. It was always bro things. Then you basically hooked me up with your friend that you knew longer than me, which is my fiance now. Wow. Did you know that they were engaged? No, I didn't know that. Are you happy to hear that? I mean... Well, what do you think? I mean, how do you think she might feel hearing for the first time on a talk show that well, you guys are engaged? Well, what about how I feel? She's just now telling me that she was in love with me. Okay, great. Like, so I, tell I mean, me how you're feeling about that. I, Is it confusing? I mean, Is it's it... confusing, but at the same time, she has to understand I love somebody else. And, you know, I mean, that part of it is just out. That's not even on the table. We will I, get to that in a minute. Right. But, you asked for help. Yes. In... Finding out why she stopped talking. Right, to because you. she's just like she just cut me off like I did something to her, and it just it made me feel bad. So, you know, this is a little clarity about why. But I mean, you knew I was with your friend, and if you if you she was didn't... in love with me, why did you hook me up with your friend? Well, I that that's a was, fair question. That was not supposed to happen. I invited both of you guys to the party so you got, guys can meet, and you guys hit it off. So. That was never supposed to That was to the happen. party she was going to tell you at. Yeah. Tell me what? My failings towards you. At a party? Yeah. Yeah. Where's the a perfect, bunch of other girls in? The perfect place. I felt confident. I felt like I had support. My best Did you ever have there. feelings for her? 
uh, as my brother or my homeboy. Yeah. Can you just call her your friend? Yeah, my friend. Okay, that is driving me I'm crazy. I'm sorry. I'm okay. sorry, but that's. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. But apology I mean, accepted. Now stop doing it. All right. It. As far as my friend, yes, I had. I still have feelings for you. As far as my friend, but not in an uh, intimate way at all. Never. I never did. Okay. How does that feel hearing that? It, it hurts, but I mean, like, at this point, I just wanted to get it off my chest, maybe to try to, like, repair that friendship. Mm. And, you know, like, of course, like, I'm happy for my best friend. Like, she's in love. You're, like, you guys are in love. And we having a baby. Yeah, you guys are having a baby. And I just want to repair that because, you know, like, I just had time, a lot of time to think about it. And, you know, I could have prevented a lot of things, but I'm just happy that, like, you know, you know, you did I nothing sent, wrong. I, I, I never sent you any mixed signals about me wanting to be with you. Well, like why don't that. you ask her? If did I? Did. Well, I mean, like, we always hung out and just, you always made me feel comfortable to be, like, who I am. Like, you always made me feel special. And just, That's like, That's what friends I, supposed to do for each other. Right, right. But I appreciated that. And just, and like, I, I started... I apologize if yeah. you took it as anything else. So you said you wanted to make this right. What does that mean? I mean, I want us to start talking again. I mean, we about to have a baby, get married. I mean, this is your friend before me. I just want you to be a part of our lives again. And I'm, I, I'm a, I apologize that I didn't see that. I apologize to you. What's coming up for you? Um, it's fine. It's just No, like... it's not fine. It's just what's coming up for you? This is where we learn just... how to talk about our feelings. Right. Tell him. <laughs> um, you know, I just want to apologize because we were really great friends. And, you know, I just feel like I just messed that up. And you know, like I, like I missed out on a lot of things. Like, I just... mean, honestly, I, I don't think you messed it up. I think right here is a point to see if we were really with friends, and right. this is going to make us stronger. If <laughs> you know, yeah, if we respect everything now, then of you know, course. you can always talk to me. I already told you that we yeah. didn't talk about a whole bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I mean. I want you a part of our lives. We cool. I, and you know, if we need to, and I won't call you bro no more. Yeah, All that's, right? yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Well, hold on. I'll take that, but this isn't done yet because this is a love triangle. And how many of you have been caught in a love triangle before? Raise those hands <laughs> high. Let me see that she's not alone. That's right. So we can't have a love triangle until the last leg of the triangle is with us, and that's your best friend, Nashima, okay? And I want to talk to her when we come back. Up next. What did I do to make you be in love with me, like? Do I need to explain the birds and the bees to you? This is all your fault. If you liked him, you could have just said that you liked him. But it's too late for that now because I have something to tell you myself. And later, she says her mom constantly embarrasses her on social media. When we're talking, she's like, Mom, such, 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 such. I'm snapping, 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 and I post. So why do you keep posting stuff if you know that it upsets her? Welcome back. We're talking about love triangles. Now, Anessa just confessed that she is in love with her friend Nathaniel. But the third leg of this triangle is Nathaniel's fiance, Nashima, who is also wondering what went wrong. Well, Anessa, we reached out to Nashima, and this is what she wanted to say to you. Anessa, you and I have been friends for almost 10 years, and you've always been like family to me. We've grown up in the same neighborhood. We did everything best friends would do. You supported me through so much growing up. You are my best friend. You became so standoffish, and you stopped talking to me for no reason. I just don't understand why. You just disappeared. I want my best friend back, and that's why I'm so hurt. Love triangles are painful because they involve friends and deep feelings and secrets and conversations that are really uncomfortable and that make us afraid. And that's why I'm here. And that's why I'm glad you reached out to me. So let's bring Nishima out so we can start talking through this. Hi. Hi. 
Well, Nishima, you've been in an area where you can't hear what we're talking about. Yeah. And you have no idea why your best friend of 10 years stopped talking to you. Why no. do you think it is? To be honest with you, I have no idea. That's why I'm here. I really want to find answers. Um, it's just kind of strange that she just up and stopped talking to me for no reason. So, Anessa, tell her. Okay. Um, I stopped talking to you because I felt like you took away my chance to be with Nathaniel, and I've always had feelings for him. I, I, I'm in love with him. Well, I was, I was in love with him. Well, if that's the case, why did you hook us up at the party? Well, I mean, it wasn't really supposed to go like that. I just, I want you supposed to be my wing woman. Like, remember when I, remember when I showed you that picture and I asked you if he was cute? And I kind of, you asked me if I liked him, but I kind of brushed it off and said no. Well, this is your fault. This is all your fault. Whether, if you liked him, you could have just said that you liked him. Then I would have just, but it's too late for that now because we are getting married. He proposed to me in August, so. So you seem bothered. Well, I, I mean, wouldn't you be bothered if your best friend told you that she was in love with someone and she's the one who hooked you up with that person? I mean, it's a little. So you had no idea. I had no idea. She could have discussed this with me. I mean, she's my best friend. It's so easy to talk to me, but instead she just ghosted, so. And so if you put yourself in her shoes, I'm not saying what she did is right. Why do you think she started acting strange? What was going on for her? Well, I mean, she just said it. She was in, she's in love with him, so she started acting funny. I mean, I guess, so you just own it. Can I ask something? What of did, course. What did I do to make you be in love with me? Like, <laughs> like I didn't, I didn't give you flowers or like we we was doing. Do I need to explain the birds and the bees to you? No, I'm just like. <laughs> Sometimes there's just an energy, right? Right. Okay. Right. I'm sorry, right. Adam. I'm sorry, Dad. We're not saying you let her on. Okay. She's telling yeah. you there was a way that your friendship. Right. made her feel okay that made her fall in love with you right that's what happened and as is yeah. the case with so many women we get nervous about rejection we get nervous about losing our best friend and so we clam up and yeah. now we're sitting here in this triangle right and so when you found out you were pregnant how did you find out the news um i found out through social media and at that time we were in talking so like that so you really, weren't talking at yeah that we point. weren't not we, talking. We weren't talking and I eventually blocked her because I'm not gonna have you on my social media watching face if you're not gonna speak to me so right so she blocked me. so there's hurt all the way around yeah. yeah and when she blocked her she blocks me so I'm like there's something funny going on yeah yeah like automatically I was blocked and I was like I didn't even do anything to her so were, did you feel like she stole your future um, at first, I felt that way, but then I had to sit and think about it. Like, I blame myself because, like, again, like she said, I could have talked to her. Like, she's my best friend. Like, she's so easy to talk to, but she has that confidence that if she wants something, she's going to go and get it. Me, I'm kind of shy, obviously, and, like, I, I like to observe and watch and wait. So, yeah. I mean, we're, ve we're different You're nodding. on that. So why are you and nodding? That's true. <laughs> I'm very outgoing, I guess, and she's yeah. more... Reserved, I get it. But at the end of the day, we're friends. You should be able to come to me about anything. Yeah. It does it hurt it you that she secrets. didn't come to you? Yes, it is. It. And does it, do you understand why she then went into the corner yeah. and started to feel really hurt by yeah. what went down? Exactly. Now there's one more thing that Nathaniel and Nishima want to ask you. And we're going to find out what that is <laughs> when we come back. Next, what did you learn? And what the hell are you gonna do moving forward? When <laughs> you get into a situation where you're afraid to say what you're thinking. And later, a mom who refuses to stop posting her kids' pictures on social media. Your kid can actually sue you for doing this. I'm happy but for you. I'm watching you grow. It means a lot to me, like I can't share it.
Welcome back. We're talking about love triangles. Now, Anessa just revealed that she had been in love with her former best friend, Nathaniel, but he's having a baby and is engaged to Nashima, who was Anissa's best friend of 10 years. But now, Nashima has a little secret, and I understand there's something that you want to ask Anessa. Well, I kind of, like, explained to you, like, he asked me to marry him. Right. So I would love for you to be at my wedding. I want you to be the maid of honor, and I also of want course. you to be around. Of Please. course. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I would be honored to, like, of course, guys. <laughs> of course. So. I feel honored that you, you know you still want me to even be of a part course. of your unionship after. But you know. friends don't leave friends if you really friends, man. Friends yeah, that is true. Family. That's exactly. true. Nathaniel. Nathaniel. <laughs> yes. Let's go back to the quote. Nothing haunts us like the things we don't say. So Anessa, you finally said what you needed to say. Yes. What does it feel like to have this off your chest? I feel so liberated right now. Like, I feel like a thousand, a thousand bucks right now. I feel yeah. like the weight has just been lifted off of me and just like, I'm ready to repair my, my friendship now and That's just be a part of, you know, the, the baby, the wedding. Like, this is so exciting. And, and we always talk the baby's godmother. Right, we always <laughs> talk about right. this. So. A maid of honor, the baby's godmother. Okay, most importantly, cause this show is about taking a step. Yeah. Right. What did you learn? And what the hell are you gonna do moving forward <laughs> when you get into a situation where you're afraid to say what you're thinking? What did you learn? Well, I learned that if you do something like this, you, can't, you cannot only think about your feelings. Like if you really care and love someone, like you're, they're gonna get hurt too if you know if you keep it inside, and that's what has been happening. You guys have been clueless, and you know I'm just expecting someone to come and save the day, but you guys didn't know anything. So my advice to anybody. What did you learn for you? I learned for me that it's better to just be open and and be honest. That's all. Just be honest, and Great. that's what I learned. Great. And what did you learn from the situation? I learned that I should pay more attention uh, and, uh, uh, because... <laughs> There's one lady you need to pay attention to and she's sitting exactly. to your right, right? Right, but I mean overall to the people that I love and call my friends and family. Well, I gotta give you props, because you actually wrote in, mm -hmm. although I suspect that you were behind the letter. Yes, she, she <laughs> was. I knew it, I knew it! Because I, but, I, but you're a good guy. Thank you. And so I really appreciate you listening to your lady. Yeah, and you, I love her, I'll do anything for I her, but at too. the same time, I love her too. This is my friend too. And you know, I don't wanna hurt, I, I don't wanna see her hurt, and I wanna see both of them happy. Y'all friends, friends should be fabulous. Exactly. Yes, <laughs> yes, well, congratulations Thank on you. your baby. Congratulations you. on getting Thank married. You. Thank you for writing Thank in. You. Thank you for showing up. We'll be right back. Up next, she says her mom refuses to stop posting pics of her on social media. I understand you also go into her phone. If she puts it down and I can catch it before it locks. Does that feel like a violation of your privacy? It does, absolutely. So, so tell, tell your mother why. And later, it's time for Note to Self. What's got you feeling stuck? Welcome back, I'm Mel Robbins. Now, how many times have you heard an older person complain about kids and how much they post online? Because you know, today's quote right here, if it's not on social media, it didn't happen. Well, now there's a new group of you that are posting too much, and guess what? It's the moms. And your kids are the ones saying, mom, you need to stop. Watch this. So Zoya, how do you feel when I post photos of you online? Well, first of all, you don't even ask me. Second, I feel comfortable sharing photos with my friends, not yours. And I kind of think you need to respect that. 
The other day, my mom posted a very embarrassing picture of me at work. And even though she posted it on her own social media pages, her personal pages, any of my friends could have viewed it and that would have been very embarrassing for me. I like the fact that my mom is my number one fan, but sometimes she can post embarrassing stuff. Is it okay if I post pictures of you on social media? It depends. What if I say no, you can't and you post it? I would never do that. Well, what if you well then I wouldn't be a very good mom, right? <laughs> Well, this is Ebony, and one of the kids that you uh, saw in that, was, that was your son, Jair, right? And she's also joined today by her daughter, Imani. So, Ebony, tell me about the post that upset Jair. Well, he got his first job. Congratulations, Mom. Yes. So, uh, he started on a Monday, and I waited all week before I had to go up there and take a picture, do a video clip. <laughs> So by Friday, I went, I walk in, I'm like, hi, Jair, hi. He's like, oh my God, mom, no, no. So I walk over, I get closer to the counter, I'm like, make a sandwich, oh my God. So I get my phone and I'm like, snap, snap. <laughs> then he's like, head down, everybody's laughing at him, the staff. There he is, at his job, <laughs> making the sandwich. So then I go over and I'm like, video. The picture wasn't enough. So I'm like doing a video because he had a customer. So I'm doing a video. I'm so excited. Then I walk to the back and I sit down and just watch him work. I'm like, hey, I'm just, <laughs> I, I, I'm, like, I'm so proud. His head is down, but by that time, I knew I had bummed it. So I got in my car, I left, went home. When he got home, he's like, Mom, no, you cannot do this. This is a disaster. You embarrass me. And I felt so bad. Did I'm you take proud. the post down? A uh, no. Okay, I'll tell you what say. <laughs> you say. <laughs> so, well, he probably what? Didn't want his friends to see him in his uniform at work. Exactly. Gotcha. Okay, so Imani, what post recently upset you? My mom posted a photo of me for National Daughter Day. And honestly, I felt like she should have got some type of consent from me to post it. Um, you know, she just went on my page. There's took a, a picture. <laughs> what's wrong? Can you just tell me, as a mother, I need to know what's wrong with that picture? Um, the lighting is kind of off. And then she, <laughs> she, she went on, her, on my page and she screenshotted it. So oh. it's kind of, yes. Well, well, here's the thing I do have to ask on all mom's behalf. Mm -hmm. Is that not okay to go on your page and screenshot? Because I would think if you posted it, mm -hmm. that's the one that you wanted me to post. Well, just tell me the rules, tell me the rules. So, so as far as feed goes on Instagram, if I post a picture on my page, I feel like it should only be seen that one time. Okay. <laughs> like, yes, my mom can like the photo, um, but you know, we may have the same followers. They may see the feed twice. It's not for that. I feel like they should be able to see the feed once and gotcha. then it should be okay. Mm -hmm. So why do you keep posting stuff if you know that it upsets her? I'm mom. <laughs> Point blank period. Like, like, I'm extremely proud of her. I'm happy that she's glowing in life. And I'm posting. I do FaceTime selfies while we're FaceTiming. She's away in college. When we're talking, she's like, Mom, such, 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 such. I'm snapping, snapping, snapping. <laughs> and I post. I do that too? Yeah. Like, I, and, then my, and then what happened is my daughter started going, are you taking a photo of us while we're talking? Exactly. And so now I have to give her a warning. Mm -hmm. Can I take a photo mm. while we're talking? Now, why are you shaking your head? See, this is new for me, too. Why are you shaking your head? The photo, she'll take it by surprise. Okay. And then she'll send it to me, or she'll send it to my dad, or she'll send it to grandma, and she'll be like, look. And I'm like, Mom, why would you send that? That's not the right photo. Well, it's not even that. You, I, I understand you also go into her phone. Yeah, if, it, if she puts it down and I can catch it before it locks, I grab it. <laughs> And why does it have a lock anyway? I should know the passcode, but anyway. So I grab it and then I just take the pictures, take the pictures. I'm like, oh, this is so cute. I love her. Oh my God. She's my mini me. You know? So is, does that feel like a violation of your privacy? It does. Absolutely. So, so tell, tell your mother why. It feels like a violation of my privacy because I feel like um, 
you know, we should be able to talk about the pictures that you post. If you liked a certain picture, I feel like I should be able to send it to you personally. Hey, mom, this is fine. For instance, National Daughter Day, I felt like you should have asked me and I, I should have gave you some type of consent to post it. Well, can I say something about this National Daughter Day? Yeah. Who the hell created this? Because I was like, it's National Daughter Day. Oh my God, okay. And then I reposted what my husband posted because I thought he probably got clearance from our daughters. Right. Because you're not the only family going through this. Okay. And here's the thing that I'm trying to wrap my brain around, which is why I wanted to talk about this. This is one of these little problems that nobody's talking about, but it's got a bigger theme. She said violation of privacy. Mm -hmm. she, they said embarrassed. Mm -hmm. And I know that... If I tell my mom something, mm -hmm. I wouldn't want her to go share it at a book club, okay. right? Because it's like embarrassing or a violation of privacy. But there's some new zone that we've stepped into as parents that we don't understand, mm -hmm. where the way that we're trying to be proud online is doing that. I've been guilty of this too. And you know, the thing that we need to be careful about is the behavior and how it continues to make our kids feel like we're stepping over boundaries mm -hmm. and that we can't be trusted. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna unpack this further. I have a word for this, because you know that I love to give words to things. <laughs> we'll be right back. Up next. I've had to reel it back in, because what happened for me is my kids started to feel like I can't trust you. I'm happy for you. I'm watching you grow. It means a lot to me. Like, I can't share it. We're in a new world. <laughs> Welcome back. We're talking about parents who violate their kids' privacy and embarrass them by constantly posting about them online. Here's a crazy statistic. By age five, the average kid has 1,500 photos of them online that they never posted. Now there's a name for this behavior by parents, it's called sharenting. <laughs> I am guilty of this. This is when a parent overshares information or pictures about their child on social media. And you know, when we were looking into this, because this is something that I've had to figure out with my kids too, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of parents are dealing with this and daughters and sons are dealing with this. <laughs> Would you believe it if I told you that in France, your kid can actually sue you for doing this. There have been lawsuits that have been successful for, for <laughs> posting pictures without permission. And it's a violation of privacy because they don't see it coming. Mm -hmm. And for whatever reason, better or worse, these kids are psycho about what they put online. Mm -hmm. And so here's one other thing I wanna show you mother to mother, that some of your posts can actually potentially put her in harm's way. There's a particular post I want to show you um, that happened at an airport. So the <laughs> thing about this post, why don't you tell me what's going on in this post? So last summer, I had the chance to study abroad. Congratulations. Thank you. Good job, Mom. <laughs> and my, I posted a boomerang um, to just kind of show, you know, that I'm going out of town. I'm going across the country. Um, and my mom goes online and she finds my page and she screenshots it. Okay. Um, and she reposted it onto her page in a collage. Okay. That's, a, that's, I can understand why. I'd want to too. In fact, I did the same thing until my business partner pointed out what I had done wrong. Basically, you're telling total strangers where your daughter is. Okay. There was a location tag on that about the airport. Mm. You also had a hashtag about her future plans. Paris. Mm -hmm. There was a date on it. And if you want to go deeper, if you steal a boomerang where you're flashing your passport, somebody can steal it and see your passport number. Mm -hmm. And that can lead to identity theft. So in our excitement, we do things that can put our kids in harm's way. But I think the bigger issue is this is something I've had to wrap my own mind around because look, I'm FaceTiming my kid at college. I'm trying to screenshot the fun shot, right? Yes. She's mad at me. Mm -hmm. I am taking photos from her feed, reposting them. She's mad at me. Wait, I thought if it was on Visco, that meant you liked it and you put the filter. <laughs> no, that means it's private. Okay. <laughs> so I've had to reel it back in okay. because what happened for me is my kids started to feel like I can't trust you. And they didn't... Oh, okay. You're <laughs> nodding your head. So talk to me about that. So when... 
when she does post them, and I don't know if she's going to post them or not, it feels like, you know, well, wow, anything that I post, my mom can just post, you know, and everyone else is going to see it. So but it kind of loses that. I'm happy trust. for you. I'm watching you grow. It means a lot to me. Like, mm -hmm. I can't share it. No. Oh. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I have a different way to look at this mm -hmm. that I want you to consider too, because mm -hmm. this is what's worked for me and my daughters. Because mm -hmm. that's where I got to with my daughters. They created private stories mm -mm. on Snapchat, that I, which you probably have, that your mother does not subscribe <laughs> to. Yep, and they had a Finsta <laughs> account, which is a fake Instagram account that you probably have, that your yeah, mother that. doesn't know. You see what I'm saying? This what, happened what's to me. What's the name? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, so here's how you get access to that stuff. You ready? You have to build the trust. Okay. And here's how you do it. If you want to post about her, just check in with her. I want to write to you about this. I want to, I want to share about this. I want to be proud of you. Is this okay? If she says no, this is the hardest part. Be like, okay. Okay. And what happens is she'll start to see that you're respecting how she wants to be portrayed online. Okay. She'll start to feel more comfortable because she will have okayed the photo you're going to post. Okay. And she'll start to feel like you're her partner in this. Okay. Now, here's one more tip. My daughter gave me access to her Snapchat account that I had been locked out of. And she's studying overseas. And I started noticing she was out every night till one o'clock. And I would start commenting, girl, you need to like, are you studying? Are you getting home safe on her? And she wrote back, if you keep doing this, I'm not gonna let you see it. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're in a new world. So what did you just learn? I learned that she has privacy and I'm going to have to Ask? <laughs> I respect her privacy and I understand she graduates college in a month. So Fabulous. I okay. <laughs> yes. And so when you get the when you get their graduation, you take a bazillion photos. You feel like I'm gonna post one of these three pick, right? Does that right. work for you? Right, right. And I will send her the ones that, hey mom, this is acceptable. Acceptable. 100%. How about, <laughs> hey, mom, it would be amazing. Hey, mom, okay. it would be amazing. There you go. You there you, uh, you two are amazing. <laughs> All right. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mel Robbins Show. I'm Mel Robbins, and I love a sticky note because they're cheap, and they're also a powerful reminder that can spark positive change. So it's time for Note to Self. And this is Maggie. Hi. Hi, Maggie. So tell me, Maggie, what's got you feeling stuck? Well, Mel, if you had met me 10 years ago, I was probably the most confident person in the room. I was very outspoken. Um, in high school and in my early 20s. I was actually class president. And I used to ask guys out and all of those things. But as I went into the workforce, I felt that I was put into a box. I was mm. told that I was too much, too loud, too this. And I took it to the point where now I feel like I lost my self-confidence. Wow. And I'm a freelancer now. And it, it actually it depends on my confidence to actually get a job. Okay. And I know that I have it somewhere in me. And I really want to get it back. Okay. So how did this job where you were constantly being felt like you were put into a box and corrected and micromanaged or whatever they were doing, how did that impact you? It just made me feel that I wasn't good enough mm -hmm. and it made me doubt myself and my skills and my knowledge, which is something that I'm, I'm very prideful of. When you say I was put in a box, do you still feel like you're in a box? <sighs> Sometimes I feel like I would go to, the, for, for example, like networking events and I would put my dress on and my makeup and everything. But then when it comes time to interact with a person, whether it is to follow up with an email or to actually go up to them and ask for an opportunity, I just kind of crawl back in and say, OK, Maggie, don't be too much. Don't say too much. Don't say too loudly. Don't do this. Give me one thing that you need to be doing that would help you grow your business as a freelancer. I need to be reaching out to people that are in the positions of the, of the places where I want to work. Okay. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. So first of all, let's start with this box that you're in. So the, oh, oh she just groaned. <laughs> okay. 
She just groaned. Why did you groan? It's just so weird. So I went to an old girl's school where I was told to be very empowered and very self-confident. And now I have a new friend who's always telling me, Maggie, you, you don't have confidence. Like, why don't you go up? And it's so weird to see that somebody that knows me now um, d doesn't know that I had this confidence in me when I was younger. Okay. So the box to me represents the fear. It represents the self-doubt. And it represents all the things that you do to silence yourself. You don't send the email. You don't walk up to the person at the networking meeting. You don't put yourself out there with dating. So you need to recognize when there's a box. And I'm going to turn it into a door. Because every time you see the box and you recognize it, the way out is through. So your note to self is walk through it. So you're smiling, which is good. So let's put you at the scene. You're about to send an email. You feel the box coming on. You start to doubt yourself. You're going to look up at your wall and see this note. What does walk through it mean to you? Just this is where you can use the five second rule. You see the box. You're going to mm -hmm. count backwards from five. Do it. Five, four, three, two, one. It's end. Same thing with talking to somebody. Same thing. Anywhere you see the box, we're going to make it a door. You're going to walk through it. What do you think about that, Maggie? Thank you. All right. I want to see a photo of you with this oh. somewhere in your house. All right. I want an update from you. When oh. you come to the Mel Robbins show, you are part of the show. She was in the audience line this morning, and now she's on yeah. TV with <laughs> Note to Self. We'll be right back. You're awesome. Welcome back. It's the last segment of the show. We call it the goodbye. And goodbyes are never easy, but you can always find a little good in them. A few weeks ago, we met a woman named Lori. I love this lady. She was struggling to rebound after a divorce, and she admitted to crying in her garage and not putting herself out there in the dating world. So I gave her some tough love. I told her to turn that garage into a she shed and get out there. So did she follow through with the advice? Watch this. Hey Mel, this is Lori in Atlanta. I created that she shed that you talked about. And instead of me pulling in my garage and crying at night, I go in with a heart full of gratitude. I also updated that dating profile, my fingers are crossed. And I also implemented the five second rule at my school. Thank you for everything, Mel. Oh my gosh, I love you. And finally, in case nobody has told you today, let me be the one to tell you that I believe in you and your ability to change your life for the better. And that's why I'm here cheering for you five days a week on the Mel Robbins Show and reminding you that whatever you're facing, you got this. I'll see you next time. Yeah.